Okay, they're calling the baby algae. Still don't know whether it's a boy or a girl yet. Then, one day, a letter did arrive, offering Mr. Quimby a teaching position in a one-room schoolhouse, grades one through eight, in a town no one had ever heard of in southeastern Oregon. Bezos ran out to the car for the road map. That's miles away, she said, when she had searched the map and found the town. It's miles away from any place, and it isn't even on a red line on the map. It's on a black line and a white line, and it's almost in Idaho. What's in that part of the country, wondered Mrs. Quimby, who, along with her husband, had lived in Oregon all her life, but had never visited that corner of the state. Sagebrush, sagebrush I guess. Mr. Quimby was vague. Juniper, lava rocks, I don't know. Sheep. I learned that in school. Bezos did not seem very happy about her knowledge. Hooray for the Portland Public Schools. Mr. Quimby's hooray did not express excitement. Lambs are cute, ventured Ramona, hoping to make her father feel better about his offer. But our house, said Mrs. Quimby, and a new baby. No one had thought the family might have to move. And Picky Picky's grave. Ramona assumed her most sorrowful expression. We would have to leave his little grave. If I were single, Mr. Quimby seemed to be thinking aloud, I might enjoy teaching in a one-room schoolhouse for a year or two. But you've got us, thought Ramona, and I don't want to leave Howie and all my friends at school and Aunt Bee and all our nice neighbors. It sounds like Laura Ingalls Wilder, said Beezus, only with sheep. Bob, Mrs. Quimby hesitated, if you want to take the job, we could rent our house. A small town might be an interesting experience for the girls until you find a job in the city. Strangers in their house? Some other child in her room marking up her walls with crayons? Oh, please, Daddy, thought Ramona with clenched fists. Please, please say no. Mr. Quimby sat tapping the end of a ballpoint pen against his teeth. His family waited, each thinking of the changes that might be made in her life. No freeways, he said, as if he were still thinking out loud. Blue skies, wide open spaces. We have blue skies here, said Ramona, except when it rains. No big library, said Beezus. Maybe no library at all. Mrs. Quimby kissed her husband on the forehead. Why don't we think it over for a few days? Now that you've had an offer, another one might come along. Good idea, said Mr. Quimby, but I need a steady income and soon. He patted the bulge that was algae. Daddy, ventured Ramona, if you don't teach in that school, promise you won't leave us and go to that Arabian Nights place, please. Not with algae on the way, Mr. Quimby hugged Ramona. Anyway, I understand that camels spit. Just like Howie's Uncle Hobart used to do when he played baseball, said Ramona. Somehow the whole family felt better, knowing that one school wanted Mr. Quimby, even if he was not sure he wanted the school. Okay, we are to chapter six, a surprise, sort of. So we'll find out what this surprise is next time. See you then.